It is a new year, and with that, it means that we have all of our way too early predictions about what will happen in the 2024 NASCAR season, and I am no different. And I don't want to get y'all waiting too long, so let's just jump on into it. First off, I'm predicting that Alex Bowman will recover at least somewhat and make the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. And there's a couple reasons why I think Bowman will have a bit of a rebound season. I mean, first off, he's in Hendrick Motorsports equipment. It's pretty hard to lose and suck in that equipment. And when you do, people are asking a lot of questions. And honestly, while Bowman has not done as well as his other three teammates have in recent years, or had the highs at least, he has still ran considerably well. And nowadays, the bar for making the playoffs has been lowered, so I honestly think that it's easier than ever points-wise to make it in, as you can be somebody 15th in points and still make it in that way. Also, with an off-season of rest on that recovering back, I think Bowman will have a bit of a resurgence on that. Now, secondly, I think that NASCAR will announce at least two tracks returning to the schedule in 2025 during the 2024 season. The top one at the moment is Rockingham. Many are looking at that and how the government of North Carolina has really been working towards having that track renovated and is part of the plan along with North Wilkesboro and NASCAR. Another that people are looking at is Road America coming back to the Xfinity Series from a one-year off period basically of NASCAR being at the track and two others that should be on the radar are the Kentucky Speedway which many have talked about as well as the Chicagoland Speedway possibly jumping in if the Chicago Street Course is not a thing anymore. The schedule has been very fluid in recent years and there's no reason to think it won't be again and no reason to think they won't go back to tracks that they've tried before already. A little bit of a down note, but third, I think that at least one major sponsor will announce that they're leaving NASCAR. My bet at the moment is Xfinity, as it has sounded like in rumors, Xfinity might not be the sponsor, or at least lead sponsor, of the second tier series, but that remains to be seen. NASCAR has been a hemorrhaging sponsorship for years, decades even at this point, and there's no reason to think that it's suddenly going to turn around next year. So, this is a prediction that while honestly pretty depressing I do think is realistic now one of the top four seeded playoff drivers in both the cup series and Xfinity series playoffs in my opinion will be eliminated in the first round this year looking at the first round for the Xfinity series Kansas Talladega and the Roval Kansas yeah is pretty straight by the book when it comes to a race but Talladega and the Roval are anything but and when you look at the first round of the cup series it gets even wackier and it gets even more of a crapshoot in the process with Atlanta Watkins Glen and the Bristol night race this is by far the wild card round and at this point I think it the cup series level at least even more than one of the top four seeded guys could be eliminated just look at some of the recent eliminations without atlanta and watkins glenn in this round fifth up is that kyle larson will run and finish in the top 10 of both the indy 500 and coke 600 this year there's been tons of prep time and he has some of the best cars in the business and on top of all of that kyle larson is one of the best drivers in the world there's no reason to think he won't excel in this kind of challenge, as a challenge is something that Larson, in many ways, desperately needs in an area that is not his expertise. So this will be a fun one to watch, and I think the bar is set on how Kurt Busch performed in his double. Sixth up is that no SHR driver will qualify for the Cup playoffs. When you look at the lineup they have now, None of them stick out as somebody you think that would excel in the modern cup series. Ryan Priest has basically been completely irrelevant outside of a flip and leading laps at Martinsville based on track position. Chase Briscoe had massive regression last year. Noah Gregson is just trying not to do something that will get him out of a car halfway through the season. And Josh Berry is a rookie who, honestly, while doing well, has not set the world on fire. Without Kevin Harvick and cars that just get worse and worse every year, there's no reason to think that this team would even be challenging for a top 20 spot. Seventh for seven time is that Jimmy Johnson will not score a top 20 finish in any of his few starts in the Cup Series. Honestly, Johnson at this point is at about the worst that he has ever been. He's older, he's 
only going to probably get worse at that. And he doesn't even have really that good of luck. He's also in a third car for Legacy, and yes, while he owns the team, let's be completely real here, they're not going to be trying to cut off their other cars at the heel just so that they can have Johnson run well. For my eighth pick, I am saying that Bubba Wallace will have a multi-win season. Yes, he went winless last season, but he has gotten better and better both with speed and racecraft every single season and even throughout last year. He and 2311 have been stout at the intermediates, and he probably, if it wasn't for a bad decision, should have won Texas, and in recent years should have run up front and won maybe even Michigan. He won Kansas as well in 2022, and he is always a threat at the super speedways. If he continues this, there's no reason to think he won't be a top 10 level driver week in and week out, and the quicker and better you run towards the front, the more often you'll have chances at winning. Ninth up is that NASCAR will announce at least two races or events outside of the United States, either with the Cup, Xfinity, Truck, or a special event. Many look at Garage 56, though a repeat of that is probably a slim to none chance. There could be exhibition races, maybe, or even the announcement of multiple race weekends in any of the top three series at Canada, and maybe even the stray shot at Mexico. Either way, NASCAR, sooner rather than later, is going to become an international brand. Rounding out the first 10 picks, I think that teams in some way will protest NASCAR as a sanctioning body due to the charter system not being set in stone yet. I also think that television will not show these protests as they will probably side with NASCAR. The teams have said they're going to do this and while NASCAR has sort of shuffled their feet with this, they seem pretty headstrong that they're going to get the message across. Now another returning race is the Brickyard 400 and I think that it'll have over 4 million viewers on NBC. See, this is a huge comeback race. Many have either forgotten how poor the last couple Brickyard races were or have a lot of nostalgia towards it. Plus, it is a big deal to run at the Oval at Indianapolis. Over 3 million viewers were watching just about every Indy road course race, and it has a lot of good lead up with Chicago and Pocono before it, which are usually pretty good in the ratings of Pocono as of late or are a splash kind of ratings deal like Chicago. Also, the last Brickyard 400 had over 4 million views as well, and while it might not surpass that, I do think it will come close. Heading into the Xfinity series, I think that AJ Allmendinger will win the most races in the series in 2024. There's a lot of road courses. That is the no-duh option with it. And I don't care that he lost a couple last year. AJ Allmendinger is the man to beat at road courses for the Xfinity Series. And in general, he excelled in the Xfinity Series when he raced full-time and probably is one that many think should win a championship. He has plenty of experience and there's no reason to think he can't pick up right where he left off. Heading into the second half of our picks, I think that Shane Van Gisbergen will not score a NASCAR win in any series this year. Chicago was really the perfect storm in more ways than one. Circumstances were perfect for his skill set to get the win in that race, and while he ran well at Indianapolis, it showed that when it was more towards what cup drivers are used to, it's a more level playing field. He was basically average in his truck start, and in the past, many first-timers from other series to go to NASCAR have not been as consistent. And while there are outliers, those should not be used as the ones to judge off what SVG will do. For our 14th pick, I think that Haley Deegan will be completely irrelevant in 2024. She was terrible in trucks, showed no improvement whatsoever, is with a mid-pack team, and is incredibly inexperienced. If Deegan gets at least three top 10s this year, I think it will be a minor miracle, especially if they're not at super speedways or rain-affected events. Sheldon Creed, on the other hand, I think will be good, but probably not have that much of a noticeable performance increase at JGR compared to RCR. Being at JGR does not guarantee success, even in the Xfinity series, and I think that Creed needs to prove that he can take that next step as a driver instead of everyone just thinking he can or that RCR was just holding him back the whole time. Remember, he is still a good driver, so I'm not taking a slight at him, but I don't think he's going to be somebody winning six races next year. 
Rounding out the Xfinity predictions, I think Eric Almirola, though, will win multiple Xfinity races. He won at Sonoma last year out dueling Kyle Larson, has had some pop-up cup wins or at least great runs in cup in recent years with inferior equipment, and he has a choice to run which races he wants, which will be the best choices for him. There's no reason to think Almirola, with that kind of performance that he's had before, as well as experience, shouldn't be able to win multiple Xfinity races with the equipment underneath him. With an incredibly low bar to clear, I think the truck finale this year will be better than 2023. NASCAR has to make it a point to these guys to make that happen, and honestly, it cannot get any worse than it did this past year. Now, for the final pick for trucks, I do think Spire will have at least three wins this year. They've really beefed up their truck program buying KBM, and this team overall has been investing a lot in NASCAR as a whole and continued to grow in 2023. With all the connections they have and upside with drivers, there's no reason to think Spire cannot be a dominant force in the third tier series. Now let's end with some overall predictions. Starting with teams, big and small, will struggle. More thanks to the two super speedways that start the season. See, money is still an issue industry-wide in this sport, all three series up top combined. Season standings will have a few guys being in a hole from the get-go because big ones are inevitable, not just something we wonder when or what will happen. Two of the four super speedway options to qualify for the cup playoffs as well as others will be finished in the first two weeks, meaning desperation will be at hold right off the bat. I don't see how this helps anyone with that, though I do think it will maybe help NASCAR overall. For pick number 20, I think TV ratings will be up for the cup regular season and down in the playoffs. Ratings last year were impacted heavily by weather especially, and in many ways by Chase Elliott being out a lot. Now, weather is not something we can predict this far out, but it's pretty certain that Chase Elliott is not going to miss a good part of the season and be irrelevant for most of it. If anything, he may even have a turnaround comeback season. And when you start with two ratings juggernauts, first off with the Daytona 500 as well as another super speedway with Atlanta, there's no reason to think that it could make a lot of casual fans or at least fans that want to see action stick around a bit longer going into the season. You have big events, especially early on with Bristol Spring, as well as some curiosity factor with the new date for Iowa, as well as Chicago returning and the Brickyard 400 returning. Now, I think that really sets up for a good regular season ratings boom. Maybe it goes down a little bit because of the Olympic break, but I do think that that break will impact heavily the playoffs, which continue to go on a downward spiral that they've been on for the better part of a decade. And there's no reason to think that NASCAR with the schedule changes is going to turn it all around. Maybe if it's in a good universe, they're flat with last year, but definitely not up. Our 21st pick is that either Spring Bristol or Iowa, maybe even both, will be impacted by weather. First off, NASCAR just has horrible luck with that kind of stuff. And Bristol in the spring always has weather issues. There's, again, no reason to think the climate of Bristol, Tennessee is randomly going to change to make everything better for the years to come. On a more positive note, I think a credible report of a new OEM showing interest in NASCAR will be announced during the season. And more than likely, the top one that people will hear about is Honda. There's been the recent news with IndyCar having issues with Honda back and forth, and NASCAR was even brought up by those at Honda as a possible option of where those funds could go. For my penultimate prediction, I think that 2024 will not be the last year of the Clash at the Coliseum, and NASCAR will, in fact, talk about having extensions with them. See, it's a big ratings win for NASCAR, even if last year was lower than the year before. And it's near Fox Studios, which is basically like a home game for them. Plus, the second one was better than the first, so they may even know how to improve overall year over year. I also think having something familiar that could kick off a new TV deal with Fox and other partners will definitely be something that can help them with other fans. And for my final prediction, we're just going to take a layup on this one. Because NASCAR fans overall will not be happy. Because when the hell are we ever happy? 
And there you have it. Once again, for the fifth year in a row, my predictions for the new season, 24 of them for 2024. Now I want to pass it on to you and ask, what are your 2024 NASCAR predictions? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for more great NASCAR content into the 2024 season. Thank you so much to all my channel members for continued support. And until next time, have a good one.